What's going on everybody? Chandler with Bushwhackers here again with another episode of So You Decided to Pick Up a Camera. And today we're talking about Aperture. Welcome back to another episode of our beginner photographer series titled, So You Decided to Pick Up a Camera. As I mentioned before, we're going to be going over Aperture today, talking about what the heck Aperture even means and what it does to your photos. Aperture is defined as the opening of a lens diaphragm through which light passes. This opening is made up of the diaphragm blades, or also known as the aperture blades. These blades control how much light is let through the lens and onto the sensor by rotating open and close. A good way to visualize how this works is by looking at the human eye. Our eyes let light through what is called the iris, and the amount of light that is let in is controlled by muscles in the iris dilating and contracting the pupil, which is that little black hole in the center of our eye. Now Aperture actually does two things for your photos. It not only controls the amount of light that hits your sensor, which then controls the exposure of your photo, but it also affects your depth of field. Now what in the world does depth of field even mean? Well depth of field means the range or distance in the photo that appears sharp or in focus. Now depth of field is a huge topic in and of itself, so we're not going to go over all of that in this video, but I do recommend checking out an older video that we did that goes into it in depth. So I recommend going and checking that out, especially if you're into macro photography. I'll put the link down in the description below. But essentially your depth of field or how much of your photo is in focus is largely determined on the size of your aperture. If you're shooting with an aperture that is wide open, you'll have a shallower depth of field or a photo that has less aspects that are in focus. And if you shoot with a tighter aperture, you'll have a much wider depth of field and more of your photo will be in focus. Now, how do we read our aperture size? Well, aperture is written as a fraction in what's called f-stops. If you take a look at your camera, you'll see that there's a setting that's written like this. It has an F and a forward slash and then a varying number. This is your aperture or f-stop. Now to read it, remember that the lower your f-stop number is, the wider your aperture is open. The higher your f-stop number is, the tighter that aperture opening is. So for example, if I have an aperture or an f-stop of f2, that aperture is wider or open more than an aperture of f8 would be. Now in the camera world, f-stops range anywhere from f0.9 all the way up to f64. But for most lenses that you'll ever be using, you'll mainly be working within the range of f2.8 to about f22. I also mentioned that aperture is written as a fraction. And you may be wondering, well how the heck does that work? Well for example, you can think of the aperture f8 as the fraction 1 8th. An aperture of f2 is equivalent to 1 half, an aperture of f16 is equivalent to 1 16th, and so on. A good way of looking at this is actually by looking at cooking measurements. 1 half cup of sugar is more than 1 16th cup of sugar. So by that same logic, an aperture of f2 is much bigger than an aperture of f16. So we've talked a lot about measurements and fractions and different numbers and stuff, but let's look at some real world examples and see what different aperture numbers can do to your photos. So let's first check out this photo of a stack of vinyl records that I have sitting back here in the office. This image does a really good job of showing what depth of field looks like, where we have a large portion of that photo that is out of focus, leaving just a small section of the photo that's in focus. What this method does is it allows you to creatively isolate your subject in a photo by strategically blurring the elements you don't want to be in focus. And this was achieved by shooting at an aperture of f2.8. Let's check out this next example and see how this can be applied to some portrait work. I have a photo that I took of Carly here, where by using a wide aperture or a lower f-stop of about f2.8, I was able to blur out portions of the photo around her face, such as that railing that she's leaning on making it so that she stands out more. This is a great tactic to use when doing portrait photography because it's an excellent way to be able to isolate the person in your image, and it helps to create more visually unique portrait work. All right, let's check out a couple examples of large depth of field, starting with this photo of Lake Blanche. As you can see, everything in this photo is in focus, from my foreground to the background. This is because I shot this image at an aperture of about f8 to f11. I prefer using larger f-stops when shooting landscape photography, because in typical landscapes, I prefer to have every element in my scene in focus. And I try to achieve this by shooting at tighter apertures. Here's another quick example of my use of using a larger depth of field. We have a photo from Capitol Reef National Park, really cool place here in Utah. And again, I shot this with a higher f-stop number to help get everything that I can in focus. Now it's important to remember that how you utilize your aperture is entirely up to you. By exploring what different aperture sizes do to your photos, you can open up entire worlds of creative choices that you can make when you're putting together your images. And always remember that the best thing you can do is just to pick up your camera and start messing around with the settings and seeing what you can come up with. But that's gonna do it for today. Remember to subscribe. But that's gonna do it for today. Remember to subscribe and leave a comment. Let me know if you have any questions on aperture 
or anything else, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. All the info for that is down in the description below. I hope you have a great day and we'll see you next week. Thank you.